your please change your display name following the format chat in the chat box. It will make sure us recognize you easier. Secondly, we will have a Q&A session towards the end of the program. Therefore, if you have any questions to ask our panel, feel free to write them in the chat box. We will address the questions towards the end of the webinar. We are also providing the attendance form for our webinar today towards the end of the webinar. Therefore, please remember to complete the attendance form accordingly. Ladies and gentlemen, international mobility programs play a crucial role in today's interconnected world. These programs facilitate the exchange of knowledge, ideas, and cultural experiences across borders, fostering a deeper understanding and appreciation of global diversity. By enabling individuals to study work or volunteer abroad, mobility programs offer innovable opportunities for personal growth, skill development, and intercultural competence. They encourage collaboration and cooperation among nations, driving innovation and promoting a more inclusive and tolerant society. In an era where international cooperation is vital for addressing global challenges, such programs serve a bridges that connect people from different backgrounds, fostering mutual understanding and paving the way for a more interconnected and prosperous future. Through this webinar, we hope that we'll be able to provide more information to international students who would like to pursue their semester exchange program at UPM and to provide insight to UPM students who are looking into pursuing their semester exchange abroad. Joining us in our webinar today is Dr. Nomura Nakao, the Director for the Division of International Exchange Support, Student Support Center, University of Tsukuba, Japan, and the Head of Mobility Section, um, Ms. Nadia Zawani, the Head of Mobility Section, Aiputra. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let's begin our program today with our first session, which is an introduction session on the inbound mobility program offered by UPM, which will be presented by Head of Mobility Section at Putra, University Putra, Malaysia, Ms. Nadia Zawani Hussein. In this session, we'll be providing more information on the inbound mobility program offered in UPM, and we will also take this opportunity to share with you some of the students' experiences from students who have completed their mobility program in UPM. Towards the end of this session, we will also be having a short Q&A session. Therefore, for students who are joining us from Tsukuba University and would like to get some clarification on the inbound mobility program offered by UPM, feel free to write down in the chat box and we'll address them accordingly at the end of the session. Okay, before we begin with our session today, please allow me to introduce you to our speaker. Nada Zawani Hussein has been holding a mobility student management portfolio since August 2017 for the International Office UPM. She is responsible for coordinating the overall mobility student application applied at University Putra Malaysia, which includes semester exchanges, summer programs, internships, and many more. She is also international of mobility students aims under the Siamuri head, representing UPM and Secretariat for the University Mobility Student Committee, who is chaired by the UPM Deputy Vice Chancellor, International and Academic. Ever since her career at UPM, she has assisted and coordinated more than 15,000 mobility students overall together with UPM entities in making sure the university's internationalizations run smoothly in mobility school. As a fine arts graduate with seven years of working experience as a creator previously, she's making use of her expertise in designing cultural short programs for inbound students virtually and physically under the Putra Experience flagship. Collaborating with various entities such as National Visual Art Development Board, Heritage Miller Museum, Language Centers, Faculties in UPM, and many more. Without further ado, we'll be passing the control to you, Ms. Nadia. Thank you, Mrs. Ida. Uh, hello, everyone uh, in Japan. Um, how are you? Today is uh, a quite sunny day in Malaysia. 
So before I start with my slides and presentation, I would like to share you a corporate video from UPM. Um, can technical team play the video? Thank you, technical team, for the video. So I'm going to share with you my slides on the mobility. Wait. So, um, welcome and selamat datang. Uh, selamat datang means welcome uh, in Malay. So, welcome to Putra International Center or uh, University Putra Malaysia. I am Nadia. I am the head of mobility at Putra International Center. 
And today I'm going to give you a, a little bit of briefing about what we have at UPM, especially for mobility programs. Okay, first of all, it's welcome to Malaysia. Uh, what we call it is Malaysia Truly Asia. As you know that Malaysia is located in the very heart of Southeast Asia, where it's, it can be easily accessed in may, from many countries such as uh, Singapore, Indonesia, Thailand, Brunei, and even Vietnam. So uh, in Malaysia, we have a very, how to say, um, amazing uh, views and also places to visit such as the island, the city, and also the highland. And uh, Malaysia is a very diverse uh, country uh, where we have um, many ethnicity and uh, our population is 32.7 million um, not that as much as uh, in Japan and we have three main races which is Malay, Chinese and also Indians. In Malaysia we have 13 states uh, and also three federal territories and uh, we shared borders with Thailand, Indonesia, and also Singapore. This is a slide, uh, Malaysian facts and figures. Um, okay, as you know that Malaysia, we love our foods and we embrace every sorts of uh, type of food that we have here. Um, since uh, our country is very diverse uh, with um, ethnicity and also people. So we also share our common interests, which is food and also culture. And um, like I said that uh, Malaysia is very rich with uh, um, amazing tourist attractions, uh, ranging from the city to the forest and also to the island. And uh, in uh, Malaysia, we have few um, UNESCO World Heritage City site where uh, you can see on in this photo, which is Malacca, uh, which located that is about uh, one hour drive from uh, UPM. Okay, I'm going to share um, a university of international repute and our mission is to make meaningful contributions towards prosperity creation, nation building and universal human being through the exploration and dissemination of knowledge. And our view value that we hold is ASEAN diversity and sustainability. And at UPM, uh, we first started with niche area, which is agriculture. Okay, just to give you a brief, um, UPM, we have two campuses. One is located at UPM Pintulu campus, uh, which is our UPM branch campus located in Sarawak, which is the Borneo, which is this site. And it is the oldest campus in Sarawak. And the main campus is located in the peninsula, which is the Sedang campus. Uh, Sedang campus uh, is located in Selangor. Uh, it's 24 kilometers from the capital city of Malaysia. Kuala Lumpur, as you know that Kuala Lumpur is where the Twin Towers are located at. So uh, we are very quite near to the city center and it's just like 23.9 kilometers to the international airport. And then we are only 14 uh, kilometers away from Putrajaya, which is the uh, main uh, territory for the governmental uh, sector. Okay. Just another quick fact. Uh, UC Putra Malaysia is one of Malaysia premier public universities with an array of disciplines. And we are accorded the status of richest research university in 2016. We are founded in 1931, which is known internationally as one of the distinguished universities in the region. And uh, we are 3000 hectares located 30 minutes away to Kuala Lumpur, Putrajaya and, and Kelai A. And in UBM, we have 84 responsibility centers uh, and we are awarded autonomy university status in 2012. In UPM, uh, we have about 7,000 staff, uh, 1,759 is our academic staff uh, with PhD and 4,809 is a non-academic staff. So from these facts, you might can like figure how big is our campus. Uh, it's really big where you will need to take a bus from point A to point B. Uh, okay, this is a student information. Uh, we are approximately 
approximately 29,000 student population overall. And they are coming from 72 countries around the world, offering unique, culturally diverse, ethnic, and community. And we have total of 16,797 undergraduate students, uh, which is uh, comprises of local students, about 14,000, and international is 2,000. And we have about 12,263 postgraduate students, uh, which comprises of local of 7,000 students, and international is about 5,200. And yeah, overall, uh, currently, UPM have the most international students, uh, which we have uh, about 7,291 international students on campus. Okay, this is our ranking. I'm gonna do just a quick fact. Um, we are ranked 123rd uh, in the QS World Ranking in 2023. And um, we are ranked 27th in the best Asian university in QS Asia University ranking 2023. We are 14th subject top 200. Uh, we're ranking world university ranking by subject and in the for the UI green metric we are ranked 25th and number one in Malaysia okay the next one is uh, Shanghai ranking is we are ranked 51st to 75th for food and science technology subject by Shanghai ranking and other than that is the uh, rank 151 to 200 veterinary science subject by Shanghai ranking Okay, we are we have about uh, fifteen faculties uh, ranging from agriculture, science, engineering, educational studies, food and science, forestry, veterinary medicine, human ecology, music, modern language and communication, design and architecture, medicine and health sciences, uh, computer science and information technology, uh, biotechnology, biomolecular science, agriculture science and forestry and humanities and management and science. Overall, we have uh, 15 uh, faculties. Um, these faculties, two of them, number 14 and 15, is actually located at our Borneo campus, which is in Sarawak. And beside that, we have 11 institute, uh, ranging from nano and uh, nanotechnology, ION2, Research and Institute on Aging, My Aging, uh, Institute of uh, Mathematical Research in SPAM, uh, Research Product Research Institute, Institute of Social Science Studies, uh, Plantation, Institute of Aquaculture and Aquatic Bioscience, Tropical Forestry and Forest Products, and uh, food security, ITAF, and also EcoScience Borneo. And as you know that um, some of this institute is a high education center of excellence, or we call it as HICO, uh, such as the IBS, INTROP, and also ITAFOST. Uh, in UPM, we have two schools, which is School of Graduate Studies and also School of Business and Economics. Uh, in uh, UPM, the most uh, um, destination, I mean, the most selected uh, Faculties uh, for mobility usually coming from the Faculty of uh, uh, Agriculture, uh, Engineering, and also um, School of Business and Economics. Okay, International Collaboration Program, ICP. Uh, as you know that we have nine collaborative programs with six institutions and coming more to come. And Okay, just to share with you, I'm 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 quite interesting. I mean, I'm quite interested to share with you on our international collaboration. As you know, that Japan is the highest uh, uh, numbers of uh, partnership that we have with UPM, with a total number of thirty one. And since I think in since five years back, uh, we have been receiving about. 1,700 students from Japan coming to UPM and the same numbers goes from uh, UPM to Japan. So as you know that um, Japan is uh, one of the countries that uh, our students would like to go and uh, we are also like very well, I mean, happy to receive you on our campus. Okay. This is the thing. So I'm gonna share you about the a little bit about our mobility programs, uh, where, where we call it as Putra Experience, a doorway to experiential learning. 
just to give you a brief, uh, our mobility activity starts in 1970s, where students and lecturers come for research and training attachment. And this has changed uh, with the initiation of summer programs by Ministry of Higher Education uh, in early 2010. Uh, now, you, now UPM mobility activities has expanded from short-term to long-term program through various activities. Um, such as summer program, industrial visits, semester exchange, and many more. As you know, that uh, a mobility program can be held from uh, one day up to one year. Okay. This is the fact that we have uh, gathered uh, for 2022. Uh, last year, we received about 1,619. Uh, students are from, I mean, inbound from all over the world, and we sent about 1,182 students. In UPM, uh, the programs that we have, um, we have uh, some programs, which is uh, 18 of them. All faculties offers uh, uh, their own niche some program that is uh, very, very interesting, that which I'm going to share with you later. And we have internship, research attachment, semester exchange, academic visits, and also workshops. Uh, our student mobility students are mainly come from 20 countries. This is just for last year, okay? And the most uh, nationality that came to uh, UPM is um, students that come from uh, Europe, which is uh, Germany, France, and Netherlands. And actually, Japan is uh in the in i think in the fourth or fifth um uh and i mean the um, numbers so it's one of our favorite students okay this is just a number uh our mobility alumni coming from uh 80 countries uh we have received about nine thousand uh two hundred and seventy three inbound students and 10,783 students uh, since uh, five years back coming from So about our statistic program, uh, agriculture to veterinary and to language and also to um, sports. Uh, and this summer program is offered all year long and especially during uh, winter and also summer holidays. So if you have uh, any plans to come to UPM, um, if you couldn't come for a semester exchange, then we can make an arrangement for a, a summer program. Okay, this is specially made for our semester exchange students, where um, at UPM we comp uh, we really focused on the students' experience in learning about our culture and our uh, history. So we have um, um, how to say uh, seven must-do activities that we will uh, host it. Uh, at UPM, uh, where we will have the new international student welcoming program, we call it NISWIP. It is actually a orientation, but it's an, in a more uh, interactive way. And then we have the Kuala Lumpur tour. Uh, we also have the three days to night homestay program, uh, the day tour to Mahamari Cultural Village, day tour to Kuala Ganda Elephant Sanctuary. Uh, and then we also have a Malaysian cultural day and a farewell ceremony to all, for all our mobility students that uh, undertake one semester exchange in UPM. So you can see the pictures on your right uh, is uh, actually the activities that we've been holding uh, for all our, our students uh, throughout the semester. So if you come to um, UPM, you will never get bored because every week we will try, we will hold a event or we have also activities by the uh, UPM buddies. Um, typically, they will do like a cultural exchange uh, kind of activities during weekend and also excursions. So I'm going to share you some picture what we have in uh, UPM. As you can see that in the picture, we have about, I think, uh, overall in the picture is uh, close to 200 students uh, that undertake a semester exchange. 
this is a picture taken um, uh, back in 2019, late 2019, uh, before COVID. Um, we used to receive about a large number of uh, students uh, that close to up to 400 students in per semester for a semester exchange, but due to COVID, the uh, numbers is slightly decreasing, but however, uh, we've seen a 50 to 70% of increasing uh, mobility students coming to UPM again. And just to share you the UNESCO trip that we have, uh, this is Malacca, uh, where our buddies will take our students to Malacca for a day tour uh, where they will explore a lot of museums, uh, historical sites, and uh, many others, uh, such as foods and also the people. And Malacca is one of the best city to visit. And if you visit Malacca, it means that you already visit Malaysia in overall. So besides that, we also have recreational activities. Uh, throughout the weekend, we have hiking, we have kayaking, we have uh, um, also suffered uh, activities, recreation activities for the students. So you don't worry if you are uh, board or you don't have any activity during the weekend, um, then uh, our office will organize it for you. Where this program is also offered for the full-time international students, you will not only mingle with uh, mobility students, but also full-time and also the local students. This is the Langkawi Island excursion where we took our students during the semester break. Uh, why I share with you all these images and also trips is because um, at UPM, we um, really focus on the students' uh, experiences at UPM. Uh, means to say like the trips and everything uh, where we want to have a, um, a holistic uh, experience for the students and experiential learning where they learn about um, uh, the academics, but in this same time, the um, Malaysian uh, culture and also the people. And this is, uh, we also did like Borneo trip. These are, I think two of them are from Korea. I mean, one from Korea and two from Japan. So we took them to um, Kota Kilambalu, Sabah. And this is the kind of like uh, activity that we did during the semester break. Okay, in UPM, we have a buddy system uh, where these buddies um, will be connecting you guys uh, before uh, coming to UPM, where we'll, we'll engage them to UPM and uh, um, how to say, um, get acquainted with them earlier. And before that, uh, before you even come, to Malaysia, we will do a uh, online briefing for you so that you able to understand the process and procedures of coming to Malaysia and how to apply. Okay, oops, I'm gonna, oh, this is my last slide. Um, okay, what I want you to do um, it, to learn is about our website. Uh, if you have any inquiries, you can just contact us as mobility at upm.edu.my. And um, we, you can find more information uh, on intl.upm.edu. And uh, please uh, follow our uh, social media account, uh, which is at UPM, I put chart UPM. Um, okay, I'm going to share you maybe a little bit more. Um, I'm going to share you my, our website. So you can actually familiarize and uh, it's easy for you to, to apply for our mobility programs. Okay. Okay, so this is our website. You can log on to uh, intl.upm.edu.my. And here is the interface. Uh, we have a lot of uh, happenings going on uh, at UPM. Uh, we, you can also get uh, some videos, uh, feedback from our previous students. So here is uh, the mobility 
side that you will need to know if you would like to apply for mobility in UPM. Okay, go to mobility and then click application procedure. And at application procedure, we have the step-by-step -step on how to apply for inbound mobility at UPM. And it's just like an easy eight uh, simple steps that is ranging from starting of you apply and submit application up to written arrangement. Okay, these are the interested students can download the following form, which is the application form uh, for inbound mobility. And what you need to do is uh, to provide a recommendation letter from the home university, a certificate, certificate copies of academic transcript, English certificate MUET uh, or any, if you are Korean students applying for semester exchange, uh, you will need to have like a obtain band 6.0 for test or IELTS. Okay, uh, for non-English speaking students country, please provide a certificate English language certificate or a letter from home university of your level of English proficiency. So if you do not have uh, these kind of uh, certificate, uh, please provide us a letter from the home university. And okay, besides that, you will have the mobility student program info sheet so where you will get all the comprehensive uh, information about um, uh, our university. Okay. This is the important part. Okay, this is a deadline uh, for you to apply to UPM, which is semester one is October 31st, May 2023. This is for you this year. And um, for next coming uh, is uh, 20, uh, March, I mean, 31st October 2023 is for the March intake. This now, this uh, date is, um, it's a, uh, how to say a, a safe window window time where you can apply. So if you have any inquiry, uh, please uh, feel free to email us at mobility at upm.edu.my and we will happily to um, assist you on the application procedure. So I, I hope uh, my uh, presentation give you a bit of brief about our university and how to apply. And hopefully we would receive you uh, on our green campus uh, one day, okay? So uh, that's about it. That's about it. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mrs. Sida. I'm gonna stop my stop sharing and uh, the floor is yours again. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Nadia, for the insightful session. Uh, before we proceed with the Q&A session, we would like to take this opportunity uh, to show you a short multimedia presentation on some of the feedback we received from our inbound mobility program at UPM, that, uh, which they have been studied here for the past few years. Uh, in the meantime, if you have any questions that you would like to ask to our panel, please write down them in the Q&A area if you notice at the bottom of your system uh, the zoom link and also you may also uh, message it or if you feel shy you can uh, directly chat to our co-host we have Hyrolia, Haja and uh, the Iputra host you can also PM them directly um, so uh, we will proceed with the video presentation Kita telah mendarat di lapangan terbang antarabangsa KL Kepada warga negara kami mengucapkan selamat pulang Dan kepada pelawat kami mengucapkan selamat datang ke Malaysia
My name is Masashi. I'm from Japan. I'm studying in Sofia University, Tokyo.、Um, I studied in science and engineering in my home university, but I study、uh, Faculty of Agriculture in UPM. UPM is the top of the university as agriculture. First impression of UPM is to be、uh, I have to go to school by bus、um, for six kilometers. Uh, from my guest house inside UPM. But、uh, they have a school bus, so、uh, it is, was convenient and I could be friends with bus driver so I can、uh, enjoy to go to school. The most memorable experience is to sharing my hometown food with my local and international students in my guest house. So we shared our country. I could e n j o y a b l e e x p e r i m e n t with my friend.、Uh, UPM is、uh, h a v e a lot of field work and、uh, so exciting school, so you should come here to study. At UPM, w a t the most hit the key field work to come to San Arno, the Yugakini Kyomiga, I saw the Hit the Kira s i d Hey guys, my name is Mike. I'm from the Technical University Ingolstadt in Germany, and here at UPM, I'm a mobility student at the Faculty of Computer Science. Well, I chose UPM because I wanted to see what Southeast Asia was like, and Malaysia itself is like the melting pot of so many cultures, so I thought I would get a really good experience here, and that is to be true. Well, my expectations、uh, were to meet a lot of interesting people. To get a lot of new experiences, to learn stuff about culture and, and like the way of living in Malaysia, which I didn't know before. And all of that was really impressive for me. I, I did learn so many like,、uh, new people, new friends, and it was just a great experience with all the staff and all the other students. It was just perfect. That one is quite hard actually. Um, um, we traveled a lot in Malaysia, and there was like one really small island. We, We, we didn't expect to go there, and one day we just saw like a ferry going there, and it's called Kapas Island. And it was really beautiful. There was nobody there on the beach, and we just went swimming along the island、uh, completely alone. That one is pretty perfect. But I have to say, there's still another place. It's basically my favorite one. And when I think of Malaysia, I will always think of that. It's the UPM guest house. Like, all, all the other students live there, and it's just like coming home to family. Every apartment are just friends. so... My favorite place in Malaysia is the UPM guest house. My best memory in studying my best memory in studying here. To be honest, I have to say it's the, it's the events.、Um, for example, the, the Aiputra Ifta and all the, the fine events made by the staff. We, we go on trips, we go to、uh, Mameri villages, and all the time we just travel together. And I have to say that one is, is the, the best I, I could experience. Of course, all the time it's bole bole! Ken <laughs> ken! Ken ken! <laughs> sure. Leute, ihr müsst auf jeden Fall nach Malaysia zu UPM kommen. Das ist mir gut. Thank you, UPM, and danke, UPM!
We hope you enjoyed the short multimedia presentation just now. And if you notice for the final multimedia presentation, uh, they were from uh, Kagawa University, Japan. And you see the students were very enjoyed. And I think they, are very, they have like a close relationship with the UPM buddies, even in during their farewell and the dinner final day, uh, they are hugging and crying with each other. So I think it's a very uh, unforgettable moment uh, for them to stay here in a short program with UPM. Okay, um, hopefully the feedback we receive from the inbound mobility students has managed to pick your interest in pursuing your semester exchange in UPM. We will now begin with the Q&A sessions. So Ms. Nadia, let's look at the Q&A box. I think there are several questions from here. We begin with the first questions from okay. anonymous <laughs> attendee. Okay, the question is, hi, may I know the details for the accommodation for this program? Okay, um, in UPM, we have uh, two type of accommodation, which is on campus and out, uh, off campus. Uh, the one that uh, usually mobility students would like to stay will be in the, um, um, will be in the on campus. Uh, in in on campus, we have a uh, different different type of uh, accommodations, uh, which is we have a dormitory types uh, where it's um, a sharing bathroom, bedroom, and also bathroom. Uh, this type of accommodation, uh, what we call as college, uh, is. Uh, it's uh, where you can like mingle with the local students where they are mainly live. And the other type is we have the KMR1 Putra. Uh, it's um, uh, another type of accommodation that is very well equipped. Uh, it's air conditioned um, near on campus. Uh, everything is walking distance. Uh, they also have a very, I mean, uh, um, a different, different type of uh, facilities. And um, other than that, we have a UPM guest house. Uh, as you as you hear from Mike, uh, the student from Germany, uh, he stays in the guest house and he uh, be friends with a lot of uh, students from all, all over the world. And uh, in UPM, the um, accommodation ranges from uh, uh, Ringgit Malaysia 300 up to 1,700 Ringgit per month. And it will be according to, I mean, the prices uh, will be depending on your uh, types of accommodation that you would like to stay. And if you would like to know more uh, about the stay, uh, you can just log on to our website, which is intl.upm.edu.my, where you will find a guidebook, an inbound guidebook, where we have all the information about the accommodation that is available on campus. And if you are a bit lost with the information, you can just email us at mobility at upm.edu.my, where we'll help you to um, basically to facilitate you on choosing the right uh, uh, accommodation and so uh, make a booking in prior. Okay, uh, for the next question, hi, me. May I know how to join this program? Can you explain the details? It's very easy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just fill out our email form uh, and we provide all the documentation needed. Uh, like I've showed you before, uh, you can just log on to our website, which is intl.upm.ed.my. Uh, go to mobility menu uh, and then uh, click on the inbound procedure where you will find all the information so just download the form fill up and get your international office to sign uh, the form and submit it to us uh, again uh, it's the uh, mobility at upm.edu.my the email and we will respond it accordingly usually uh, the application we will take about one month to process uh, before we can actually issue the offer letter no Crystal clear. Okay. Okay, how we yeah. proceed with the next question from Benedict. Hello, Benedict. Oh, sorry. Um it the question is make okay. it how I would like to ask two questions. So one, when will you announce the nominations for an exchange and how is the situation with on-campus student housing? Thanks in advance and greetings from Austria. 
Okay, good question, Benedict. Uh, okay, usually, like I mentioned to, uh, before is, um, okay, the application is, uh, application, we have like two type of date, which is uh, if you are coming for a, um, how to say, October intake, uh, then the application deadline will be on uh, 31st May. 2023 or 2024, for example, if you want to apply for next year. And uh, if you are applying for March, uh, then the uh, deadline would be on this year. I mean, if you apply for March next year, meaning 2024, the semester two is on the 31st October of every each year. So um, these are the two only timelines that we have. Um, and uh, if possible, um, and then uh, once we receive the application, we will then submit it to the faculty uh, based on the final deadline that we have. And we start to process and then in a month, then you will get your uh, offer letter and then you can begin the application for visas and everything. Okay, I think uh, there's another question. Can I take courses from different faculty that is different from my major? Thank you. Yes, you can take uh, uh, different uh, courses from different faculty, uh, but you will need to take um, uh, core courses at the faculty that you are registered in. And it's okay if you want to take like course, I mean, if you are studying in engineering, you want to study in business, uh, faculty, you want to take courses in uh, language uh, faculties, it's no problem as long as you have like one or two core subjects at the university, I mean, the faculty that you are registered in. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. I, I have so, one more final question. Yeah, I have a like outbound uh, question. Hi, I am a local postgraduate student from UPM and I'm interested to join Mobility Shop Program in two weeks in Suguba. I know who should I contact and the university. Okay, uh, Fatin, I think. Uh, you are right, right, Fatin. <laughs> yeah, we will share with you. I uh, mean, um, the more insights about Sukuba. Um, uh, later on, Mrs. Zida. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Nadia, for the informative session and clarification you have provided. We hope that our previous session has managed to provide more clarification for the questions you might have regarding the Inbound Mobility Program in UPM. For information, from the year 2019 until the year 2023, we have welcomed more than 5,000 Inbound Mobility students to UPM and the various mobility programs such as semester exchange, short-term visit, uh, internship, research attachment, and also virtual mobility. We look forward to welcoming students from Sukuba University and other universities as well to join us in our ever-growing UPM inbound mobility alumni. Okay, for the next session, ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin with our next session with an introduction session on the mobility program offered by Sukuba University, which will be presented by Dr. Nomura Nakao, the Director for the Division of International Exchange Support, Student Support Center, University of Sukuba, Japan. In this session, we will be providing more information on the student mobility program offered at Sukuba University for UPM students. Before we begin our session today, please, me, please allow me to introduce you to our speaker today. Dr. Nomura Nakao is currently serving as Director at Division of International Exchange Support Student Support Center, as well as Regional Director for Southeast Asia at Bureau of Global Initiatives, University of Tsukuba, Japan. He is also serving as a national representative from Japan for the Steering Committee of AIMS Asian International Mobility for Students program organized by Sumo Rehab. His research specialty is bioprocess engineering, particularly uh, application of biotechnology of environmental, environmental renovation of food production with collaborations with international partners. He is conducting teaching and research as associate professor in Faculty of Life and Environmental Sciences, University of Tsukuba. Without further delay, Dr. Nomura, we are passing the control to you. Thank you very much for the introduction. I'm Nomura from University of Tsukuba. Uh, first of all, I'd like to extend my gratitude to provide the opportunity to introduce 
uh, University of Tsukuba for the student, uh, mainly for the student in the UPM. Uh, let me start my introduction by sharing the screen. My presentation is about the overview of the University of Tsukuba and some information about the opportunity for the study abroad for partner universities. Okay. Wait a moment. Okay. So, okay. Okay. Um, University of Tsukuba is um, one of the, how to say, the uh, largest research comprehensive university in Japan. But actually, the, if you ask Tsukuba to Japanese friend, they may know Tsukuba as the largest science city. Tsukuba is famous as the Tsukuba Science City for Japanese uh, research and technology uh, cutting edge. And uh, this Tsukuba Science City was developed about 50 years ago under the national, pro national project. Then the um, Japanese government decided the Tsukuba as a host for the national research uh, science city. Then the uh, more than 20 uh, large national research institutes moved to Tsukuba and they formed the National Science City under the Tsukuba. And in line with this, uh, more than 200 private research institutes move also to Tsukuba. And we have a big community of the cutting edge of the research and development of Japan. And of course, to support this science city of whole Japan, need some institution in the field of higher education. Uh, university is a place for the uh, very basic natural researches and also the nurturing the future researcher for the National Research Institute and Private Research Institute. So the, um, before having the science city in Tsukuba, there were no university here. Then, the, of course, the Japanese government was planning to put the uh, university, which is very strong in the research, then uh, our university used to be in Tsukuba under the name of, uh, used to be in Tokyo under the name of Universal Education. Then we are asked to move to Tsukuba to become a more comprehensive and more focusing on the research. And we changed the name and the University of Tsukuba uh, after the name of the host of the this science city. So that, um, that means that Tsukuba is one of the big community for the research and development. And uh, University has a big advantage of the close collaboration of the uh, high-tech research in the National Research Institute. Most of the university students are expecting to do many uh, active research uh, thesis and the collaboration with the research institute in the University uh, Tsukuba Science City. Okay, and the location of the Tsukuba, um, it's a bit similar to uh, UPM. It's a bit um, outskirts of the capital of the country. We are near from Tokyo, but not inside the Tokyo. And in the Tsukuba to Tokyo, there is a train connecting uh, by express train called the Tsukuba Express, 45 minutes up to the right that downtown in Tokyo. And also we are close to the national largest two airports, Haneda and Narita. And those two airports are connected by the shuttle service. So the Tokyo and two major airports are not really far from Tsukuba and location is quite good accessible. And um, uh, most of the students and faculty live in Tsukuba, but uh, some live in Tokyo or nearby, then come to Tsukuba every day by train. And I, as I explained to you, the, there are many research institutes, and uh, you can see the map that's showing the sum of the big research institutes in Tsuku University uh, Tsukuba Science City. The famous one is like a JAXA, it's a research center for the space development. Uh, it's like a NASA in the United States. And the largest station of the JAXA is located in uh, Tsukuba. And I heard there are some scholars from Malaysia also working in JAXA. And also the industrial research center called the AIST is located in Tsukuba as well. Uh, when Japanese government received pres President Obama, uh, he visited this research institute for the research development for the Japanese industry, especially robotics. And other many research institutes are located in Tsukuba. And the important thing is that University of Tsukuba has a many uh, adjunct professor in this research institute as uh, associated faculty. So they are doing the research in their research institute, 
but also the graduate student has opportunity to do research in those institutes as well. So that, as I told you, we have we are very strong uh, in the research, and nowadays most of the university are declaring that as a research university or university for education. Uh, I, I heard that university uh, in Malaysia also has uh, some consortium for the research university called the RU, and in case of Malaysia, it's a five. UPM, of course, is a member of the RU five. And in Japan, we have also consortium of the research university called the RU11. And uh, we have around 800 universities in Japan, but 11 comprehensive universities are designated as the research university. And Stuba is one of the member of the RU11. But our history is really long. We have around 100 years history in Tokyo. Uh, and that, that time focusing more on the education or pedagogy because our origin is a higher normal school. And actually our uh, origin of the normal higher school is the oldest higher education institution in Japan. And after 100 years history in Tokyo, we moved to Tsukuba in line with the establishment of a Tsukuba Science City and uh, almost 50 years. So this year, actually it's uh, 151 year anniversary of the uh, University of Tsukuba from the inception. And the 50 years anniversary, of the establishment of the University of Tsukuba. Our strength in the research is proven by the three Nobel laureate, two in physics and one in chemistry. Another unique point of Tsukuba is that we have a faculty in the field of sports science. In Japan, uh, sports science or coaching science or physical education are mostly in the private universities. But the Tsukuba is only one public university which has a, a large uh, faculty of the sports science. Then we have a lot of athletes in the world class and the more than 100 medalists are from University of Tsukuba, including the current stu student. And the Tsukuba is also famous for the globalization of our student and the faculty. Uh, this number 2,500 is showing the number of the international inbound students as of the 2022 October. Uh, of course, we welcome a lot of students from Malaysia, 20, uh, 42, 15 male and 27 female. Um, if you look at this number only, uh, it's not really highest in Japan, but if we compare the ratio of the international students, this is the uh, highest in the public university in Japan. So the um, Tsukuba is one of the most globalized public universities in Japan in that sense. And uh, another thing, important thing is that we have a high diversity of the, their home country more than 116 countries are sending the student to University of Tsukuba. And uh, uh, overall, Japan, uh, about 70% of the international students in Japan are from China. But in Tsukuba, uh, we have nearly 50% of Chinese students. That means a bit lower, meaning that we have a high diversity of the nationality of the home country of international students. Uh, this slide is showing some of the um, research activity on the University of Tsukuba. I don't have enough time to uh, explain one by one, but the uh, important thing of these research topics are um, collaboration across the disciplines uh, a lot, and the university is promoting a lot of the collaboration cross disciplinary For example, if you look at the photo of the robot suit here, Robot suits is one of the cutting edge research for the robotics or mechanical engineering. And used to be the famous research activity under the mechanical engineering. But the, for Japan, uh, in Tsukuba, we receive this kind of topic as a collaboration between humanity, medicine, and engineering. Since we have a hyper uh, aging society, these robot users are mainly aged people. Then the faculty of medicine, has large data about the condition of the aging society in Japan and what kind of mechanics or properties are necessary for this robot suit. Mechanical engineer do close collaboration and information sharing with the medicine people, including the humanity people, um, the, to develop this kind of ro robot suit for Japanese case. And this is a research uh, study field covered by the undergrad level. Uh, most of the uh, study fields are covered by University of Tsukuba and 
inside, uh, maybe some of you are thinking that the studying in Japan, you need to speak Japanese, but that's before we have a lot of the program taught in English. And we open this for the bachelor degree student, degree seeking student, as well as a student from the partner university as a non-degree student. Maybe UPM called this as a mobility student, but we call this, this student a special study student or the, a non-degree student. Uh, this subject in the English program are open for those students from partner university. I listed up um, a few uh, programs all taught English. One is the life and environmental sciences. Second is the international social study. Third is a global issue and the engineering and Japan expert. Uh, I will explain a little uh, bit one by one. One is the engineering. Um, the, there are four pillars in this program. One is the electronics. Second is the uh, mechanical or robotics. Third one is the computer science or computer simulation. And fourth is the material science. Uh, these, in the first year of this program, students study all of them because we call this interdisciplinary. And the uh, unique point of this program that the student in this program uh, can start the thesis work from the third year. Usually engineering program allows students to do the thesis work from the four, fourth year. But this program allows students uh, to start uh, third year and spend two years for the project. So that means the students have more time to enjoy the research lab, research activity with the supervisor. Second is the life and environmental sciences. Uh, this program is supported by the three college called um, biological sciences, agrobiological sci resource sciences, and geosciences. And next is uh, international social studies. These are the four college supporting economics, law, sociology, and political sciences. The next one is a global issue. Uh, this study, this program allows students to study more on the SDGs and uh, a lot of internship program are provided in this program. And uh, this program has a lot of students from Malaysia as well. <clears throat> and uh, uh, another course is called the Japan Expert Program. Slide is shown in English, Japanese because this program uh, nurtures the student from overseas to work in Japan, to join Japanese industry. That's why the first year students do a lot of intensive program for the Japanese language study. And uh, from third year and fourth year, a lot of internship program in the Japanese private sectors so that, that they can go for the Japanese industry smoothly after graduation. And uh, those are the undergrad program, but actually we have more programs in English in the graduate level. A lot of the, I can say that most of the research uh, study field are covered by the graduate school in, taught in English. In Japan, the graduate study is really important for the research. Students spend more time on the research activity. That means uh, matching with the student research proposal, post professors uh, specialty is very important. So usually we recommend the student to contact the host professor for the graduate program before applying. But of course, overseas students do not know any professors sometimes. That's why we provide this kind of search engine of the faculty to identify the possible supervisor after admission. If you type, you don't have to know the name of the professor, you just type the keyword of your proposal and there will be a lot of hits of the professor. And you can see the details, research activity, courses, teaching, and uh, administrative job. You can see that from the list. Then you can start communicating with the host professor to be ready for the admission and the entrance exam. Uh, another thing to share with the student from UPM is that we are active member of the AIMS program called Asia International Mobility for Students. Uh, this program has these rules. I think, that, of course, the UPM um, uh, recognize this rule, and uh, sometimes I think this introduced to the student in UPM, I believe. Then the AIMS program started from the 2011, and actually the, Malaysia is the, the member of the AIMS from the very beginning, by seven, uh, the seven universities. And uh, of course, UPM is a member from the beginning. And Japan started joining AIMS from the 2013 with 11 universities. And University of Tsukuba is uh, the coordinator of these 11 universities, and I'm a national coordinator of this AIMS program from Japan. This is a partner of AIMS program of University of Tsukuba. We have a lot of partner universities from Malaysia. Of course, UPM is included in that, the, our partner in Malaysia. We receive a lot of students from UPM and also we send uh, Japanese students to UPM. 
this is a list, uh, photo of the student. Every semester, nearly 25 to 35 students uh, will come to, uh, from the Southeast Asia, including the student from Malaysia. Uh, this is a recent, uh, previous semester. We have, uh, I think, largest uh, student in this semester was from Malaysia. I, I, I would like to add some more information about the student support. We put academic advisor, one per one student, and also we have a tutor, you call buddy. Uh, additionally, the, we assign one student to support the incoming uh, international student. And staff also speak English. Mental health support is by the English speaking counselor. We have a faculty of medicine. That's why we have a lot of the services for the student in the medicine, medical facility. And uh, Japanese language study is not only limited for the humanities student. All the major students can have a chance to study Japanese language. And this is not only for the degree seeking student non-degree seeking student also the, you can study Japanese language for one semester or one year. Well, campus dormitory, we have around the 4,000 campus dormitory room. Uh, the number of the students are more than that, but we give priority to the international student and the mostly uh, non-degree student can stay in the campus dormitory. And the uh, room rent is around 150 to 400 US dollars. And the other facility in the campus, um, important thing for UPM student is that we have a lot of students from the Islam country. So we have a halal food cafeteria, a few. And also the supermarket in the campus also sell a lot of the material for the halal cooking. Um, if you come to Tsukuba and the exchange student or non-degree student uh, from UPM, uh, of course, tuition fee is waived because we have agreement. But if you come to Tsukuba as a, the degree seeking student, or you enter the graduate program, these are the costs um, for the uh, study in Tsukuba. Application, admission, annual tuition is almost same with all uh, national universities in Japan. And the accommodation and the monthly rent is shown here. Monthly cost of living is just average, so that I know most of the students can manage below this. Um, we provide the common kitchen and uh, students usually the, um, use those facilities to minimize their expense, uh, living expenses. And um, today the time is very short, but we do have an online admission counseling service. If you'd like to have individual counseling service for admission, asking many questions, you can scan this QR code access and to make a reservation with the counselor uh, admission officer. And you can have a 30 minutes to one hour individual conversation with them. Okay, thank you very much for your opportunity. And uh, I'm happy if you, uh, to entertain your question if you have. Thank you very much for your attention. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Nomura, for the insightful session. We hope you were able to get more insights on some of the program offered by Tsukuba University for UPM students. If you have any questions that you would like to ask our panel, please write them down in the Q&A box and we will address it accordingly during the Q&A session after this. We would also like to highlight that the attendance link for our webinar uh, will be posted in the chat box. I'm not sure whether it already has posted or not, uh, but we can check uh, later. Okay. Um, therefore, we would like for our participants to fill in the attendance form accordingly. Ladies and gentlemen, moving to our final session, to our mini webinar today, we will be joined by our Miss, by Miss Noor Shahira Shazwani from the Faculty of Agriculture a UPM student who is currently pursuing her semester exchange under the Asian International Mobility for Students aims at Tsukuba University to share with us her outbound mobility experience. Ms. Shahira, the control is yours. Thank you, Ms. Ida. Uh, wait a second, I will share my screen. Okay. Uh, can you can you see the slide? It's perfect. Okay. So hello everyone. My name is Nishera Shazwani, and I'm currently exchanging for the spring and summer program at University of Tsukuba under Ames. So this is our picture. Uh, the current Ames students with the founder of University of Tsukuba. Uh, about me, my name is Nishera Shazwani Binti Nor Azman. I'm currently a second year Bachelor of Horticulture students 
And um, the program that I'm joining is a six months program at the University of Tsukuba, which in Japanese is being called as Tsukuba Daigaku. So why did I choose Japan? Uh, personally, the reason uh, was mainly because I did study Japanese for three years during uh, high school. So I have the basic uh, to speak and like I can ask people if I don't understand anything. So it's uh, convenient. Other than that, Japan is also pretty famous for their food and their scenery and their culture. <clears throat> so uh, I would like to expose myself to the culture of Japanese people other than since I've only been to Malaysia, uh, I've only lived in Malaysia before. Uh, and lastly, I will also like to experience the spring and summer seasons in Japan uh, as Malaysia only have uh, one season, which is like summer all the year. But my senior from Malaysia did say that the summer in Japan is actually uh, hotter than Malaysia, but we will see. Uh, and then how did I apply? Um, uh, as have been said before, I did apply through the website of iFutra. Uh, under the AIM scholarship program, there's an Excel file where you can find uh, which faculty and which university you're eligible to apply for, uh, along with their deadline and so on. Other than that, you just uh, have to contact your faculty, uh, your related faculty staff, and the IFUTRA staff, they will assist you from A to Z. Uh, and that is how I was able to join this program. So these are a few of pictures about my university experience. <clears throat> uh, I have been here for two months now. And as you can see in the uh, left picture, we ride our bicycle as bicycle is the main transportation here. Uh, there's also a bus provided, but I think it's faster and easier for you to ride the bicycle as the university actually provide a specialized pathway for the bicycles and for the cyclists and the pedestrians. <laughs> and you can go anywhere near the university with bicycle. Uh, and then, as you can see at the fountain picture, it's actually uh, the most famous place in university, I guess because whenever I search up for this university, this place, this place picture will pop up. So this is actually a go-to place for my friends and I to sit down, to eat bread from the bakery across the fountain uh, and to do our work because even though it's exposed under the sunlight, it's not hot at all. It's very comfortable for you to sit there. So we just enjoy chat chatting and so on. And then uh, we also have presentation class, which is a class uh, taught by Dr. Nomura Nakao that just presented just now. Uh, it's a very uh, fun class uh, where mobility students uh, from University of Tsukuba itself and also from other universities that came to University of Tsukuba will attend this class. So you will be able to mingle with all, uh, with all people from all kinds of countries. So it's very interesting class where you will have to like discuss about the current issues and so on. So yeah. And then I also joined a circle. Uh, in University of Tsukuba, there is a circle and a club. Uh, the difference is that club requires you to attend every day while circle only, only like once a week. But for my circle, which is the Ikenobo, a flower arrangement circle, uh, there's like a schedule, so I only have to attend like once a month. But uh, in this club, you will be given like new sets of flowers every week and you can freely uh, arrange them and the teacher will, uh, will help you to correct them if you don't understand, if you don't know what to do, how to improve your design, they will guide you. So it's a very interesting club and there's also a international student there that can be your bridge to communicate between you and the teachers. So that's why. And then we also have a special spring program named Champur, which means mixing, right? Uh, and this is a program where every uh, countries will alternate uh, weekly uh, to 
handle a program that teach that teaches their like traditional games, their history and their food and so on. Uh, and up till now, there have only been like three countries that have hand, that have held their Champur event, which are Japan, Indonesia, and Malaysia with Brunei. So in the first week, the Japan uh, turn, they taught us their traditional games. We played their games and we also made our own takoyaki, which was being taught by uh, an Osaka origin person. So we learned the authentic takoyaki. And then for the Indonesia time, we played their games that they usually play during their Independence Day celebration. And they also serve us mie goreng. And while well, the Malaysia and Brunei, it actually just happened yesterday. Uh, so if you, re if you view the picture, it's the bottom one, that's the Malaysia and Brunei. Uh, and then in our, our program, we taught them how to dance the traditional dance, which is the Sumazal dance. Uh, and we also served them nasi lemak, along with like dodol and supering and so on. Oh, along with Tang Yuan, I think. Um, however, even though we did try to make the sambal less spicier, more sweeter, however, uh, because the Japanese people are not good with spicy food, uh, it is still quite spicy for them, but they still say that they enjoy the food, so I'm glad that they did. Now, uh, moving to the Ibaraki specialty. So, uh, Ibaraki is, well, it's not really well known among the tourists but so that's why I like to uh, include this inside my slide uh, one of the Ibaraki specialties is actually natto which is the uh, uh, made up of soybeans and it's actually people usually say that it's stinky it does stink but it's not that bad for me you can give it a try when you come to Ibaraki there's like a, a various type of natto and you can actually find them pretty easily in convenience store like Lawson or uh, even Kasumi, I think, the, uh, the, con uh, the store that sell all kind of groceries in university area. Uh, there's also the Hitachi Seaside Park, which is a must-go place during spring season for uh, as it is known for its nemophila flower, as you can see the blue flowers here that blooms during springs. After that, uh, Tsukuba also has its own Tsukuba Matsuri that I think will be held this August. Uh, and other than that, Tsukuba also uh, is in the top three for its fireworks. Uh, the Tsuchiora fireworks competition is actually one of the biggest uh, fireworks competition in Japan. Uh, other than that, uh, there's also a Mount Tsukuba here, which is very near the university. You can choose to hike the mountain or you can choose to ride the cable car. Uh, and one of my teachers said that from the Mount Tsukuba, you can see the Mount Fuji if the weather is nice and clear. Uh, here are compilations of pictures from what I've done up till now, like where did I go and so on. So uh, during Raya celebration, we um, we met up with all the other Malaysians, like the alumni and the uh, seniors that are currently studying from undergraduate to postgraduate. So we cooked together the night before and tomorrow and the next day we had a picnic at the park. This park is also a must-go place if you're in Tsukuba during spring because there, uh, there are a lot of sakura, as the name suggests. Other than that, I also went to the Tokyo uh, Shibuya and Ikebukuro because, as we all know, there's a bus provided directly from the university to Tokyo Station. So it's uh, very convenient for you guys to go to Tokyo. And it's actually the cheapest way to go there. Uh, and if you're like, uh, if you enjoy the entertainment industry of Japan, these two are places where you must go. Other than that, I also went to Shimokitazawa and the Tokyo Chami Mos with, with my friend over here. Her name is actually Hikaru and she exchanged to UPM last semester from Tokyo Agriculture University. And we met up last year. We met for the first time last, last semester. 
And this semester, she decided to bring me uh, uh, to Japan, uh, to places where I might have not gone by myself or with my friends. Uh, and also, we all, she also sh uh, showed me the vegan cafe in the Shimokitazawa. So I did try the curry bread. As she said, the Shimokitazawa is known for their curry. And lastly, the picture below in the center here is the Tsukuba Central Park, which you can take bus or you can just ride your bicycle straight there as it's not that far from, the, as it's still inside the university uh, place. And there, at there, all of the AIM students met up and decided to picnic together. And here are the pictures of the food that I've eaten here. These are all like the halal food that I've I found. These are the yakiniku and the soda clear and pasta and so on. And lastly, over here uh, are the Domino's pizzas that when we picnic at the Tsukuba Central Park, um, Dr. Nomura decided to bought us all this uh, food to give us, uh, even though I thought that Dr. Nomura was going to join us, but uh, he was kind enough to uh, order a delivery for the person to deliver straight to us at the park. So I would like to thank Dr. Nomura once again. It was a wonderful, uh, it was a very delightful and wonderful time for us. And then lastly, for my thoughts on this program, uh, it's a very worthwhile experience for me because uh, prior coming to here, prior coming to Japan, I was actually pretty anxious because I will have to travel alone, right, from Malaysia to Japan. And it's like, it's a big matter for me because I have to go out of the country, go, go to another country where people uh, have a very different uh, culture for me where they, uh, they also speak a very different language from me. So uh, that is like one of my worries. Other than that, I was also scared of using public transportation because uh, even back in Malaysia, I was not used to the public transportation. So uh, I always relied on my friends. Uh, so having to use it by myself actually uh, scared me. However, after coming here, I was glad that I did challenge myself doing all of this because uh, throughout prepare uh, while preparing for this uh, for this uh, program, I did uh, do everything by myself. Uh, so uh, right now, I'm pretty confident with the process because I know it. I know what to do and what to prepare now. Uh, so I so I'm more confident of traveling like other places. So it's like I did overcome, I did go out of my comfort zone and I also adapt pretty quickly. Uh, and I also got the sense of independence finally at the age of 21. Uh, so I do highly recommend this program to those who want to broaden their horizon, to want to be able to view the world in a new vision, in a new light and so on. So. Yeah, please come to Tsukuba. <laughs> That's all from me. Thank you. Thank you for the exciting presentation. We are really intrigued by all the activities you have joined and the beautiful scenery you have shared with us. Hopefully, through your presentation just now, we are able to inspire other UPM students to pursue their outbound mobility program during their studies here in UPM. Okay, we will now open the floor for Q&A from our audience. Uh, if you have any questions that you would like to ask our panel, please write down them in the Q&A box and we will address them accordingly. So, Dr. Nomura, I'm opening the Q&A box uh, so I can see there's a several questions here. I think all of them are four questions right now. So let me um, repeat again the first question that we have received just now uh, during our presentation with UPM. 
Hi, I am a local postgrad student from UPM and I am interested in joining a mobility short term program two weeks at Tsukuba University, Japan. May I know who should I contact from the university for this mobility program? Thank in advance. I think the question is more uh, also similar with um, the Fatin's question and Pavitran Devakrishnan. Uh, she also asked about the uh, how can I apply for the two weeks mobility program in Tsukuba University? Thank you. Okay. Uh, before answering the question, I'd like to introduce my staff for supporting the student mobility. This is Mayu. Uh, actually, she is coordinating the um, inbound and outbound student with the UPM. Uh, so that I will answer. So if some question is relevant for Mayu to answer, I will ask her to answer. But okay. the first question, maybe I should answer. A short-term program, like a two or three weeks for the lab program. Um, we do not have a website compiling all the information, but I know two programs are present. Uh, one is by the medical science, and another one is uh, physical education or sports science. And for the detail, uh, actually, the, during the pandemic, they didn't conduct because physical mobility was not possible. But I heard that this year they will open it. But the website, I have checked it, it's not yet open yet. So the, probably you can keep watching the website of the university and you can check it. And I will share those, if once it's updated, I will share the iPutra about those short-term programs through Mayu. Then the, uh, for the, you can inform to the student. Okay, but the, I'm sure that they will open it. I think the medical science and the physical education or sports science, okay. Okay, I think we proceed with the next question. Is there any lab attachment program for postgraduate level in Tsukuba University? Um, I think I told in my presentation that the graduate study in Japan, not only Tsukuba, is mainly for research. So that if you uh, enter the graduate program, I think a lot of lab activities there but then uh, before admitting to the graduate program, we usually recommend the international student to be a research student. That means that to, to join laboratory before admission. And if you're really interested in the lab attachment program, I recommend this student to apply for the research student. And uh, uh, if you have a status as a research student, you can join the laboratory. And uh, to be a research student, uh, no entrance exam, just a consent from the host professor, and you can enter. Are they conducted in English, uh, doctor? Yes, and you can communicate with the uh, host professor in English. And identification of the host professor can be done through the trios that I introduced in my presentation. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay uh, as for now, final question from Adam Haikal. Does Sukuba University provide scholarship under JASO for semester exchange or research attachment for undergrads and postgraduate students? Yeah, JASO uh, scholarship is for, per program. So the University of Tsukuba has a lot of program which has a scholarship under JASO, but the whole university JASO scholarship, we do not have. I think no university in Japan have uh, JASO for the whole university. So some program in Tsukuba has a JASO scholarship and some program do not have. Okay. Uh, the Mayu, is that okay? I think you you know something about JASO also. Uh, no, I think it's okay. And then okay. I put uh, on the chat box, I put some URL you can check about the okay. student exchange. Okay, in the checks box, right? Okay. So, dear students, you can refer to our chat box there. Ms. Mayu did uh, give a link on the information of the international. So, I think you all can get all the information inside uh, through this link. And also, uh, our information of UPM also for the information on this that link also as well from Ms. Haja. Uh, is there any question more uh, before we end our session today? Uh,
Okay, I think all is clear. So, and uh, Dr. Namura and Miss Mayu also would like to thank you uh, because you have uh, like uh, taking a good care of our students over no there. Problem. That's my yeah. pleasure. <laughs> So I think uh, from the her presentation, uh, she looked very enjoyed and uh, uh, enjoyed her study there. And she also got I um, mean um, new experience to uh, bring back to uh, Malaysia. Okay. Thank you very uh, much for taking care of my uh, scuba student in UPM. Also, uh, I heard that uh, some students who came back from UTM had a very good time in UPM campus, beautiful campus. Thank you very much. That's good to hear. <laughs> Okay, we have now come to the end of our mini webinar today. We hope you have learned something new and enjoyed your time today. Before we draw the curtain for our webinar today, I would like to thank our panelists who has taken the time to be with us today, our crew members who are working tirelessly to execute our program today, and to our dearest audience who joined us today in our webinar. Before we end this session, I would like to remind you again that the attendance form link can be found in the chat box. Therefore, for those who have yet to fill in the Google form, please do so accordingly. Thank you for today and jumpa lagi. I'm with us, Suhaila, signing off. Thank you. Terima kasih. Thank you. Terima kasih. Thank Arigato. you. Terima kasih. <laughs>